His face was lean, but soft, with a cherub smile and a fox's teeth. He looked like he was happy to see me and like he'd be just as happy to kill me if push came to shove. It wasn't unpleasant, all things considered. Glass wasn't kidding. He kept more per pound in those pockets than most kangaroos. Pens, keys, cards, tablets. I looked at Glass and his eyes were waiting for me. They said a lot, those two dark eyes. Was I sure they wanted to know? And who could blame him? I wanted to know, too. But this was the way it had to go. And he saw that in me, and he nodded. Effortlessly, like trusting me was the easiest thing there was. I wish I had that much faith in me. Feels like you could fix the whole damn galaxy with someone looking at you that way. You know, you're very handsome when you're like this. Not getting drunker by the second? Morally outraged. Look at him. Standing up against the big, mean world. It's so futile and foolish and sexy. Lips like silk. Strong hands pulling on my coat. It was the kind of kiss that feels like it's going to last the rest of your life. He was gone. His smell still lingered in the air, that cologne I could never place. A scent from some other planet like nothing I'd ever smelt before. It'd take weeks to get that stink out. He must have written it behind his back. I'd believe he could do anything. One minute he's your partner, and the next minute he's... Gone. Sleep in the smell of Peter Nureyev in the air. It would take weeks for that smell to fade. I've missed it ever since. He wasn't reassuring me any. Peter Nureyev was his name, one of them anyway. Back when we met, he'd gone by Rex Glass, and within two days he'd stolen a lot of junk from me. A key, a mask, a kiss, and... I forget it. Not this time. I wasn't going to fall for it this time. I couldn't tell if he was leaning in or if my tight little card finally gotten the best of me, but that smell... Suddenly I was wrapped up in the smell of his cologne all over again, a smell like the spices of some faraway planet. He had that same smirk on, too, like he just thought of some private joke that he didn't feel the need to share. Damn it, Steele, not again. Not this time. Nureyev's coat. I started through the pockets, a knife, some nuts from the bar, a matchbook from the front desk. Even in the Arctic air conditioning, I was sweating. Rex Glass had peeled his skin away to reveal Peter Nureyev. So how did I know Nureyev wouldn't peel his off to reveal? Who? Christ, he kept a lot of junk in his pockets. A lockpick and a hand mirror. A camera hidden in the button. Bottomless. Endless. Hints of the man or the mask. If Nureyev was worried, his face didn't show it. Most of the time he just looked bored with a half-smile like he was humoring the world, waiting for it to do something worth his attention again. A guy does that for you, Rita. Do you have to trust him back? Even if you aren't sure you know who he is, even if you aren't sure you know his real face, his real name, or what he's really capable of doing to you. He was a criminal with very powerful friends, one of whom wanted me dead very, very badly. That unsettled me, to say the least. Peter Nureyev unsettled me in a lot of ways. Nureyev had Engstrom from behind. Pinned like that, Engstrom looked pathetic. An old man fighting an old grudge, a thief, forgotten by everyone but himself. But Nureyev... Nureyev was the fox, grinning, his teeth bared. A face like that had tasted blood before and found it sweet as milk. And so the question remained, did I trust this man? I wanted to outrun the end of the world with this man because finally, I trusted Peter Nureyev. I wanted to keep trusting him and odds are a thousand to one that by this time tomorrow, he would be dead. I looked up at those clear eyes, the cutting teeth of his smile, and suddenly, I knew too. Nureyev stared at the dead man, a blood slick knife in his hand, and in the strange red light of that strange red room, I could not tell where the knife ended and Peter Nureyev began. 
And how did he get from there to the man he was today? The master thief who'd broken and entered my life. And then I looked at him, and those eyes. Even in this cave, underground, they were so bright. How the hell did he do it? Stay so bright through all of this. In the distance, back where my body was, I felt a set of slender fingers close over mine. Who is Peter Nureyev? Peter Nureyev is the son of a revolutionary who probably never existed. And Peter Nureyev is the son of a thief, too. A man who showed his love through lies up until the moment Nureyev killed him. And Peter Nureyev is a name. A name whispered in the shadows of a floating weapon. A monster under every bed in a floating city of tyrants. Peter Nureyev is a thief without a home. And he was a thief without a name. Until me. Because Nureyev was wrong all those years ago. He said a name wasn't worth anything. He said that he'd never have one again. gift I didn't understand. So who is Peter Nureyev? Peter Nureyev is a man who makes me feel... makes me feel a lot, okay? And I know he'll be back, because I know one more thing about Peter Nureyev. I make him feel a lot, too. Now, why not? Everyone's got a flaw. Here's hoping his doesn't get him killed. He pulls off the mask, and there he is. Peter Nureyev, looking like a knight in stolen armor. It was like nothing else. Just like Peter Nureyev. Nureyev falls asleep in minutes. I watch him in the dark for hours. I smell his cologne. See those sharp teeth peek past his lips as he snores. Nureyev sleeps deeply, like someone who knows that tomorrow he's waking up to will be worth showing up for. Lying next to him, I feel that way too. And suddenly, desperately, I want to chase a future of that feeling every single day with him. And then I saw him. Sitting on that car screen hood, I saw him. And when I realized who he was to this crew, when I realized we'd be working together, when I realized the star-dusted sky behind him was his home already and was soon to be mine, it felt like my heart jumped off a cliff. A feeling so strong and so striking, I had no idea if I was excited or terrified or both. He parted his lips and showed me that sharpened smile and said, Hello, Juno. It's been a while. He's been like this since yesterday. Whining, long-winded, hanging on me like creeping vines. And in fact, I'm beginning to grow concerned that he may have been like this since the day he was born. <sighs> Juno Steele. There is just no changing some people, is there? I know from experience that he's competent enough, and if this position in Buddy Orinko's criminal operation works out, well, good for him. I bear him no ill will. Who has the time? But then, while Juno choked over his coffee, while he cast that soft, confused eye my way, I realized the significant difference between a man and a resume. A man can elaborate. I am certain this will work. Positive of our success on absolutely every variable, except one. Juno Steele, whose stealth leaves something to be desired. It is not just that he flashes our fake money to the guard at the door. When we walk the carpet into the gala, he attempts a turn and trips, actually trips, for everyone to see. Uh, oh. 
pretty smooth, right? Even his smile is unbefitting for a thief. It's so naive. With every flicker of feeling, that smile shifts, daring a confident second of the sun, then hiding away behind his lips, then peeking again. You can read a man's soul with a smile like that, can see his every hope and fear and love and... <clears throat> Fold it away. File under for future consideration. When I see Juno across the ballroom, a vision in gold and light. Juno is flirting. He's picked up some long-haired, claw-nailed young woman in the crowd, and he's putting on a face I've never seen from him before, cocky and confident, looking her up and down when she turns away. I don't have time to be livid. I allow myself a few seconds of it anyway before I shout, Dear, dear... But still, the way he was staring at that woman, hardly blinking, he nearly jeopardized our work, our freedom, so he could talk to a pretty face in the crowd. The nerve of it, the unmitigated... <sighs> All while having to babysit a loud-mouthed criminal novice named Juno... <clears throat> For future consideration. For future consideration. In my experience, other people are just distractions. Especially this one. Preparation is everything to a thief. Unlike this holier-than-thou ex-private eye who made his career charging into beating after beating and connecting the dots between his bruises. Juno takes an inefficient moment to stare at Nova Zolotovna again, and for the first time I can tell what that stare actually means. He isn't taken by her, distracted by her poise or her looks, He's studying her, examining her, and he does not like what he sees. I realize, despite myself, that I do like what I see when I look at him. There's a hardness in his jaw, a carved-out sharpness in his eyes and his scars. She morally outrages him, I can now tell. And then I realize I've become distracted, too. Smiles from Juno Steel come like shapes in firelight, flickering and unsure and inconsistent. I hold my breath near this one, lest a stray exhalation put it out. Then we squeeze hands and spin away from one another, I towards Nova Zolotovna and he towards our ultimate goal. I watch him for the first few minutes, as he twirls from dancer to dancer, growing ever closer to that gilded globe, until I realize that I don't have to. I can trust him to do this on his own. And then, I am thinking about Juno. About his righteous indignance. About his flickering smile. And more than that, I am thinking about the reasons it has come so easily for me to ignore him. To be cruel to him. Because he is a different man from the one who left me in Hyperion City. Because he has changed without me. And I can hide in that distance and pretend I never felt for him at all. Across the room I see him spin past the globe, and then it's gone. And a feeling swells inside me that is terrifying in its size. And, and he I goes on like that for some time. I, I hear his apology, but more than that I hear his voice, and I hear him. This new Juno Steel who does not bite when you examine his scars, who bears wet wounds to you with wet eyes, but looking at this new man respecting what he has made himself into and perhaps even envying it. There is nothing I want more than to stay. 